What is going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. In case you missed it, the TFSA limit for 2024 it just got increased to $7,000. They do this FYI every couple of years as a measure of indexing to inflation. So you'll see it bump up by about 500 you know, per time typically. I thought it would be a perfect time to do a video on one stock to buy in the TFSA. This is one that I've been looking at. I think it's just well worth at least putting on your radar. You can obviously do your own research and due diligence, but I wanted to use this stock more as an example about how you know I approach these types of investments. Because one thing I've been seeing you know, in the comment section on Blossom, et cetera, is a lot of new entrants to the stock market, they're kind of doubting themselves during this shaky market. The market has been pretty shaky for the past couple of years. A lot of investors are down if they started, some of their stocks aren't performing, and some of these even high quality big names, they're seeing, you know, 10% drops on earnings. It's quite, quite volatile. Rightfully so, as a new investor, that can worry you. Well, this stock that I wanna talk about today hopefully puts that at ease and it really gets you primed in the mind. Thinking like a long-term investor, this is how I like to approach all of my positions. And I think as we go through this, maybe that will help as well. So hopefully you stick around to the end of the video. I've got some exciting charts to share with you. But if you enjoy, give a thumbs up, let's dive in. The company is the Bank of Nova Scotia, ticker BNS. And this one today is trading for $56 and it's offering a 7.55% dividend. So you just take a look at that share price chart. Um, it's had a rough go of it, down 40%. I don't know if you guys caught last week, they were down 10% on some news, and we see this dividend just sky high. So essentially depressed pricing. And a key here in this fall, this isn't just related to Bank of Nova Scotia. We've seen weakness across the entire banking sector, really, uh, in North America with everything that's been going on over the past year. But one thing in particular that's unique to Bank of Nova Scotia is about 40% of their revenues comes from their international operations. Places like Chile, Mexico we see here, Brazil, now Peru, we do see the United States. You know, these nations, like the South American in particular, they have been providing investors with a lot of doubt and a lot of weakness. What I find is funny, uh, not funny, but it's just interesting, you know, when a bank or a business in general makes like a strategic decision to be in a specific market. For example, BNS heavier in the South American market, when these markets are flourishing and when they're doing good, they look like geniuses and everyone's you know hot to jump on why this bank is so special for being in these markets. When that tide turns and we do experience some shakiness like we are, they look like a fool and you see a lot of investors kind of panicking like why are they in these markets, et cetera, et cetera. You know, TD like is a great example. Very heavy in you know the American market, right? A lot of their revenue and earnings come from their US segment. That's a business decision and it can work in your favor at times and sometimes it can work out of your favor. We see the PE today trading at 8.85, which is pretty much at, we could call it here, multi-decade lows. And the question that I ask myself when I'm looking at a company like this or really any investment for my portfolio that I'm considering is, is this a short-term thing in the long scheme of things over my investment horizon or is this actually gonna be detrimental? And in the case of Bank of Nova Scotia, this is my belief. You guys can let me know in the comment section below if you, if you agree or disagree, but I just can't help but look at these articles and look back at the history of the banks and how stable they've been, their dividend history, paying dividends for 100 plus years. These banks have been through crises before. They've been through credit crises. They've been through COVID, of course, recently. They really have seen it all. And what I find is fascinating is if you look back over the past six months, you know, it's been like a pretty ugly story, down 14%. Again, the news articles that you're gonna see is just weakness, scary, scary, scary. If we stretch out to, let's say, a three-year timeline, we see a total return of 20%. This is total return, by the way, that we're looking at. If we stretch to a 10-year time horizon, or basically looking at the past decade, well, the stock's posted a 300% gain. And if we stretch this all time, so we look back as far as we can go, this chart is just astronomical and it's the kind of exactly what you want to see from an investment moving up and to the right, obviously blips along the way. And to me, this is just another example where investors do feel so short sighted at times and it's easy to get lost, especially when you're new because that's all you're surrounded with, with what's going on at the time. But a question that I ask myself and I would pose to you if you're worried about the volatility you're seeing in you know, stocks such as this, and I say stocks such as this, because that, there's a very important distinction there, right? If you're holding like a game, GameStop or AMC or one of these junk stocks that aren't good businesses, I don't think this rule applies. In fact, I feel this doesn't apply. But when you're looking at some of the most highest quality establishments, like literally, you know, the Canadian banks across the globe, the question I ask is, if you held this stock 
over the past 10 years, you're sitting on a 300% return because you were patient, you gave the company time to work. Did it matter back in 2013 or 2012 or even 2002, like back 10 years ago, whether the stock had a rough quarter or a bad earnings report or even a bad year, you're sitting on a 300% return because you allowed the business to flourish and thrive, right? And that's the approach that I like to take as a long-term investor is being able to disconnect myself from that day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month operation, so to speak. Again, unless it's detrimental because companies go through rough patches and without a doubt, we're in a challenging uh, time right now for businesses across the board. In my personal opinion, while I do expect to see rough waters ahead still with holdings like this and actually a number of holdings in this challenging environment, I do try my best to disconnect myself and step back. And it's something that hopefully this is a great example of when you look at these all-time returns. If you take a look at what the analysts are looking at with the stock right now, we're seeing them trade at about a 50% discount off fair value. If you look over to Morningstar, we're seeing a clear five-star buy. These are in US dollars, by the way, if you're looking at the share price and like why does it mat- match up, US ticker, but still a five-star value buy in their opinion. Of course, you're pulling in nice dividends along the way, 7.55% alone, something that may put you at ease a little bit while we're kind of treading through this shaky market. To me, like the Bank of Nova Scotia isn't even my favorite bank. You guys know this. Like you guys know in my portfolio, I own both TD and Royal Bank. Those are the two that I've selected. But I just think the sector in general is looking attractive for a long-term investor. Bank of Montreal, BMO is looking good. But in particular, BNS is the one that I wanted to focus on today. And again, A, the point of this video is to hopefully give you guys possibly a good idea that you can go research further and it may be a great fit for your portfolio, assuming you like uh, the selection today, but more so to hit home and hammer home the mentality of how to approach stocks when we're in a shaky market. I've said this a million times on the channel, like some of the new positions that I've been building in my portfolio, I just started a portfolio, you know, in the past couple of years where we've been in this choppy market, a lot of the positions are down. And yeah, you look at it and you're down 15% or or 17% or 5% and it, it doesn't feel good that you're not making money. But if you understand, if you feel you're picking good businesses such as this, that 10, 15, 20 years down the road are going to show this type of growth, you actually want to be buying into these weaker periods. You wanna be buying when the shares are down. You're never gonna perfectly time that bottom. But in my opinion, it's a matter of finding when the stock's just offering a good value or a good entry and buying around that area and accumulating, accumulating, accumulating on the dips essentially. Um, that's what I believe is a, is a great uh, example for Bank of Nova Scotia right now. So you guys can let me know, know down in the comment section below whether you agree or disagree, if there are any better stocks that you guys are liking at the moment. I'm not saying it's the best stock out there, but it's one that I've been looking at and one that I just think is well worth the consideration. If you guys enjoyed, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more content and let me know. Of course, the Investing Academy is down below if you're looking for courses and training and download Blossom. We're at over 60,000 users on the app. You guys will absolutely love it. It is completely free. There's a link in bio where you can check it out on the App Store. But as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.